have a very interesting and very rare check engine light on 2010 Infiniti G37 and that's I believe 7 speed of the money transmission my understanding this check engine code pops up a lot more often in manual transmission vehicles and it's very rare in automatic transmission it took a while to figure out what problem might be Infiniti G37 is fairly common vehicle but I did not find anyone on internet on YouTube forums who had same issue first I'll check with my small OBD reader here part neutral switch input circuit and like I say I didn't find anyone who had exact same issue most vehicles have that parking switch and usually cost about 30 bucks I looked up and for infinity the new one is 210 dollars at first I was not sure if I have to replace if it's just the annoying check engine light person that drove the car who was also puzzled why that check engine light came up but he remembered that it happened twice where he would park the vehicle but was not able to turn the vehicle off so he had to put it in drive back in park and then it would turn off so there's definitely an issue with this uh, parking switch so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get to that parking switch assembly and it's somewhere under here it's best to use uh, plastic pry bars uh, tools like that I'll just use metal with towel. Hopefully, I'm not gonna scratch anything. Side is out. And second place to do it is right here. And let's remove this. We're gonna just grab like this, push it down. Here's this metal clip. Now I'm gonna find it later on. I'm gonna just scratch this. Part because I had to record, didn't concentrate, so be careful, don't scratch yours. So here we're going to remove all those connectors Push on brakes Push this down Switch to neutral Should give you a bit more room Here we, we have to disconnect a couple things First this one I can actually park it now Disconnect this one out well, so far I can't find where exactly that parking assembly is I'm gonna have to spend some time looking at the service manual it's probably somewhere here but then I also have no idea how to take it out I definitely need to check the service manual initially I thought about just replacing this box because that's a mode selection control box or whatever the name of it and maybe replacing the shift lock one as well just because in case this one's acting up this one might not be too far from it so I thought about replacing both but to do that you have to remove pretty much remove the center console as you can see here this from what I'm seeing this plastic piece it's part of center console so you cannot remove this alone you have to remove the whole box and with this here it's impossible to remove this one or maybe it is possible but I really can't see how if it is possible it's very tough and same with this one there's just not enough room so then I thought that since I have to remove the center console might as well replace the whole shifter assembly so I ordered one on eBay for about $85 total that was supposed to be in a good condition from 2012 G37 journey so I thought about replacing the whole shifter assembly there is four bolts on top 
that hold this uh, assembly here. It'll be better if I'll show you on this one. So four bolts go on top and under the vehicle there is a clip or something here. I'll show you under the car in a minute. So that was I was planning on doing but when the item arrived I saw this wires broken cut. I could still probably put wire from other infinity but instead of doing that I'll just replace uh, this box and this box and probably I won't have to remove any of those bolts or the clip under the car I'll just have to remove the center console here's the bottom of the shifter assembly on the left side you see this metal clip probably you just have to remove this to to pop that bottom portion out if not you can probably also loosen that uh, nut on the right side so that's only thing you have to do at the bottom of the car but in my case I'm not gonna remove the whole shifter assembly I'll just remove the center console to get access to replace the box on the left and box on the right I'll start by removing two Phillips screws and it's not this one on the top it's the one on the bottom same thing on this side I think in the back there gotta be somewhere screwed here. I'll try to pull it down. Then unplug this connector. Don't mess with this one at the bottom, I think that's an airbag module. And we're gonna remove this and this screw. It's pretty tight there. See if this one has a little better grip. Nope. It's very tough to loosen it. I'm gonna use a ratchet with Phillips fitting. Got it. Well, that one sucked, but it's working now. Good. So now the whole rear lifts up. Let's remove this. And I think we have to remove this clip that is attached to the metal on the other side. I'm not even sure how to reach another side. So I'll just maybe break it, we'll see what's gonna happen. I broke it, but it was a lot easier with this tool. And by looking at it, you probably need to depress on two sides. Very tough angle though. It does look like everything lifts now, so we'll see if I'll be able to remove it. Looks like there is two more connections. It's for a cigarette adapter, whatever plug. And this one... Remove it by pushing on here. And that was a USB. So as you can see, it's TV is still not done because now this is on the way. You have to figure out what's hold this and remove that. I think it's just two Phillips screws. So I'm gonna remove this one. 
and this one right here okay. it's definitely moving now and I think it's just gonna pull out yep so now if you do replace the whole shifter assembly it's gonna be that clip under the vehicle like I showed you before and four bolts where you have very easy access to all of them and size here it's 10 millimeter but like I say, I'm not removing this one. So I'll start by replacing this box. I'm gonna remove this one first. I believe this one's called shift lock switch. And from what it looks like, it's just two Phillips screws. And here's the one connector. And that's uh, no other connectors. Make sure if you replace it, make sure yours like this one is well lubricated. And as I said before, the reason I'm doing two of them is because to get to it, I had to remove set the console and those uh, AC vents. So might as well replace two of them. To get connector removed, just take it all out, get it twisted a little, so you have access to the connector, just push on that side and remove it. Installation is in reverse order, plug it in. Put wires under this uh, plastic trim piece. if I didn't think of it before but you can move your driver's side seat to the rear so you can actually use long screwdriver to access to the bolts much easier this way just like that this side is done so now let's look at this really quick Looks like it will be fairly easy to pop this cover off. Doesn't really tell you anything. Now I'm gonna remove those two screws just to see what's in there. I believe mine is not broken, so I'll save it just in case. I'd assume maybe that's what works with shift lock. So I assume if you have issues with this one, you could take it apart like I did and maybe lubricate it. I'm still not sure though what lubricant to use for that. You could try WD-40, but I don't think it would last as long as whatever they use here. Whatever they use here reminds me of like aqua lubricant or whatever. Lubricant for water pump uh, systems, but I'm not sure what exactly they use here. Now we're gonna replace uh, this one and unplug it from two sides. And there are just two Phillips screws holding it. As you can see, it's also lubricated. So we're gonna remove this one. I'll start unplugging this connector. And also move the seat back. And insert the replacement. Plug it in. Now you can do a pretty quick test to see if it's working. Just start the car. It's also a good way, good angle to see how the system works. So my guess, and I could be wrong, but I think this thing is responsible for shift lock and this one for mode selection. Just like with the other one, I'm gonna take this one apart and see what's in it. 
don't see anything burnt but I don't know much about electronics anyway to know if, if it looks bad or not can't say if those are in a bad shape or not but I'd say if you don't want to spend money on a replacement you could try to take it apart like I did and put some dielectrical grease there Let's see if I can take this one out. I don't want to break it. I freaking broke it. It's just to show you I'm not... I don't know that much about electronics. Okay, I think correct way is put it all the way to this side. And then lift it up. Because we have this up here, but not in the, here. But look at those. You might have to clean those up. After you clean those up, use a dielectric grease. Put it all back together and it might work. The board does look good, I don't see any issues there, but it's always possible that I have some issue here as well. Let's put everything back. I figure I'll clean this one with air compressor. Not sure if it's gonna do anything, but why not since it's out. I'm gonna put the air thing back in place. Just by looking from here again, I have no idea how. I've seen on forums people supposedly were able to take it off without removing this I don't know how unless maybe their trim level of vehicle didn't had rear AC but like I said I can't see how someone would be able to do it without removing this or just center console altogether by the way I noticed here one connector that's not been used I have two here for heated seats and this one's just vacant let me know what it's for maybe it's for I don't know, maybe convertible version of the vehicle or maybe for like the one that shows sport, eco, whatever, driving modes. But I wonder if this could be used for something else, some modifications. And this stuff, you don't have to do it too tight. Now we're gonna put in the center console. It's a really good idea to clean it if you care, because you'll never have it wide open like it is now. So clean it up, why not? gonna plug those uh, two connectors in I think one's for USB uh, and other one's for like cigarette light or whatever it's called so front is aligned let's look at the back and back is aligned too Negative side on Infinity G37 is, I think, the material is not really of a good quality and I think that happens on most of them. Look how it's coming off, it's cracked, and this stuff sticking out, but there is nothing you could do. As far as I know, there is nothing you could do to solve that issue. If you know how to, please uh, comment below. I'm gonna work on this side first, and I'll start by moving this cable, and it actually should be over this frame. But fairly easy fix. I broke my clip off because it's not really important, but I think I should still be able to put it back in a place. Yep, good. I'm gonna insert this. Actually, before I put this one in, I'm gonna put the screws here. Like I said before, you don't want to do it super tight because if you ever have to take it out again, you don't want to have same issues I was having before. Now we can put this one back in place. The ones with those two points going to be outside. going to go like this. Pretty easy. And only thing we have to do here is plug this connector in. And I'm actually very curious, and please let me know in comments below what's the purpose of this, because I don't see anything here. So we'll plug this one back in. And put it, slide it back in place. Now let's work on the front. Now two screws on the front. Now we're gonna put this piece here, and there are four connectors on mine. Two in the back, we're gonna go for the seat heaters on the top, 
Do this one, gonna go to the right here, cigarette lighter or whatever. And last one, this one, gonna go right here. I like that it has a brown color on two sides, so you know which one goes where. Put this back in. By the way, it might be tough to go back in, so here's what you do. Start the car, put it in neutral, put it back in. And put it back in park. Before working on a shifter, I'm gonna put this one back in place. Now let's work on the shifter. Here's how shifter should look like. And that's where this one going. Pretty easy and just clicks. And then just leave this back up. And that's it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna erase the code. I'm pretty sure that fixed the issue. If I'll have the same check engine light come back on, or if I'll have issues with turning vehicle off while it's parked, I'll post another video finding more solutions to my issues. But I'm pretty sure that solved the problem. Sorry guys, maybe crappy audio, but just to show you one mistake I made before, when you put this one back on, have to take it all apart just for this mistake but when you put this back on make sure this thing aligns with right here i'm gonna use this shifter to show you mistake i made because on this one i have same thing if you look through here kick high doesn't go all the way to drive just a little bit i guess it goes enough to switch to drive but it's not all the way in so you can't switch to the manual shifter as well that's as far as it goes Again, mine is broken, just imagine that that piece is still here. So disassemble it, so that's where the issue is. You see this metal pin or whatever you want to call it? Make sure it goes right into this one. This was not inside this. It still was able to secure itself here with two bolts, but this pin was not in this. So anytime you secure it, make sure it goes together. So let's try to secure it now correctly and see how shifter gonna behave then okay now it's inside this goes all the way down and you can actually switch it to the manual hopefully that made sense and just to update you on the vehicle it's been now about at least several weeks over 100 miles check engine light did not come back on and i did not have any issues with the uh, shifter again well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave comments below. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos about Infinity repairs or repairs on any other vehicle. Below this video, I have Amazon links to tools I used to perform this job. And if you did enjoy this video, also please click the like button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.